Hey everybody, here looking at one of my TV boxes or home theater PCs. This is just a basic home theater PC that's in the bedroom. But there's something about this Windows Media Center that is different than what you may expect. You may not even notice it right away, but let's go ahead and pull up some, for example, let's go to Record TV where you should see some numbers. Now for those of you who pay close attention to the Cisco fun on your on your computers, you may know that you know in Windows Vista and Windows 7, you had the original Cisco UI and in Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10, you know in the newer Microsoft operating systems you have a newer variant of Cisco UI. They're very similar, but the um, there are some there are actually are some changes between the two. In particular, with numbers, there's a huge change. Numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 have all been changed. You can probably tell if you look closely. And of course, it's sad to say that Microsoft no longer wants to support such a great product, and that's one is Media Center. Um, but I figure, you know, this would be one way to sort of modernize the look of the um, program. <laughs> As you can see, we do have, in fact, you know, we do we do have the newer Cisco system font in Windows Media Center. Now, of course, I just done a video on actually how to give Windows 7 a new look with the newer Cisco UI fonts, but to give it to Windows Media Center is nowhere near as easy. It's not it's not all that difficult, but it does require downloading, you know, a font editor that's called FontForge to edit the metadata. So, anyways, um. Just for example here, I'll show you what this is. This is in fact Windows 7. This is your regular Windows 7 Media Center. So yeah, here's the, um, <clears throat> the software version and you can see the numbers yet again. And of course, you know, we're running Windows 7. And of course you can see the newer Cisco UI numbers there and system specs. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about how to actually do this modification. Okay, now we're at the computer. It's going to show you how to do this modification. There are two things you'll need to download. Number one is FontForge. Number two is Take Ownership. FontForge is, is, is a free to use um, font editor and we'll be using it to just simply edit the metadata in three different fonts. Take Ownership is just simply a, um, it's an application, it's not actually an application, it's just a registry fix. What it does is it um, allows you to add an option into your right click menu in Windows Explorer to take ownership because the files that you'll be overwriting, um, you know, the, the files you'll be, yeah, the files you'll be overwriting will be protected system files and otherwise, unless you take ownership, it will not allow you to overwrite them or do whatnot with them. So, anyways, um, let's go and get started here. Um, show you this sort of an example of what I've done here. So, anyways, what you need to do is you'll need to locate the fonts that are actually within Windows Media Center. Um, they are actually located. You know, if you go to C, Windows, eHome. Now, of course, I did slipstream a um, Windows Media Center installed in Windows 10. It doesn't work exactly like the one in Windows 7 either, but anyways. There are three font files here that um, suppose I've already modified. But I think if you've run Media Center already for one, for one time, you have to, like, since you're rebooting the machine, you'll have to log, either log off or probably just restart the computer. Because you want to you want to um, overwrite these files before you actually launch Media Center. So, anyways, it's these three it's these three files. So that's where they're located, and you'll need to use the Take Ownership option. Just right click and choose Take Ownership, which I've already done. You'll just what you'll you'll just see three command prompts just briefly pop up and go away. It just sets it just sets you as the owner, and not um, I think um, system. 
or I can't I don't remember exactly who is the owner of the files initially. So you once you've already you've already taken ownership of those, now what you need to do is on your on a Windows 10 machine or Windows 8 machine you need to locate these three files. <clears throat> if you just go to control panel and the fonts scroll down to Sego UI double click and you have your different Sego fonts in here you will need the Sego UI regular the Sego UI light and the Sego UI semi bold those three you will need for, so for example I'll show you something here you can right click and choose copy and let's go and create a new folder here paste these files in here now one thing you may think is okay why don't I just rewrite why don't I just rename those font files to match that of media center trust me it does not work it will not work you literally have to edit the metadata of the font files to get media center to recognize those fonts and use them otherwise when you launch when you launch media center you'll just get rel as it can't find this, the native font so it reverts back to rel um, or Arial, however you want to call it. <clears throat> so anyways, um, that's why we have to go this far in to modify the font files. At this point, what you need to do is you have to open up FontForge. Now, FontForge can be a little confusing to use at first. Here it is, FontForge. And it's asking you to open a font. We'll navigate to our font, which is on the desktop in a new folder. And what you have to do is one by one edit these, the metadata. You don't actually touch the font itself. You're only editing the metadata. So what you can do is you can go to um, Element and choose Font Info, and you get this here. Now, for example, what you also have to do is open up one of the... Um, when it's media center fonts. Now these three font files I've already modified, but I would have to restart the machine in order them for, for them to actually take effect. Um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open them up in FontForge. And of course you can run multiple instances of FontForge. What you do is you go to, well in this case, to navigate straight to the fonts themselves what we'll do is just go to you know C Windows again eHome and find your fonts this is the standard this is Sego Media Center regular so again C Windows eHome we'll open this up however we're not going to make any changes to the font it should be the old one. Actually, no, it's not. It's it's actually um, this is uh, as I, oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, these are these are actually pre-modified. These are ones I already modified. So of course you see the newer the newer characters. Um, now of course yours what yours would show the older one to seven style numbers, and of course capital I and capital Q. <clears throat> but I've already changed the metadata on these to show the old metadata. So we do to go to font info. We're just saying this for example, let's say this is the old font. You have to change font name, family name and name for humans to these three here. Just you just, just have to match them up. Also with the version and the SMFT uh, S, FNT revision. I always change those as well. And I even went as far as to, um, actually I didn't change the copyright on these, I, I kept them 2015. But yeah, you have to. You actually have to change the SM, F, SFNT ver, revision, version, <clears throat> name for humans, family name, and font name. On your new, basically on the new Sigo font, you have to change these to that. Now for example, um, what I'm going to do here is just leave it like it is. 
you would just go ahead and make those changes then you would go to generate fonts and you would you would actually name the font to match that of the appropriate Windows Media Center font so of course regular Sega Media Center would be SEGMCR semi bold would be SEGMCSB and Sego MCL, of course, you know, yeah, the um, the Sego, of course, yeah, that's light. So Sego Media Center light would, of course, be Sego MCL. And you would just rename, you know, when it prompts you to, um, you know, for the file name, of course, it would actually, initially it will name the file based on the font name that you put in here earlier. Now, I forgot to mention, just make sure you know, you would actually open up each of the original Media Center fonts in FontForge. You know, all three of them. And copy over, basically copy over this, 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 and this over to the respective newer Sego UI font you're wanting to change. And of course, you know, once that's all done, as I mentioned, you, did, you would go to Generate Fonts. And by default, it's going to be selected to something other than true type. It'll be like PS Type 1 or, you know, one of these. You would change it to true type, and when you click generate, actually you can uncheck validate before saving because the only thing you changed was the metadata. Now FontForge is going to throw up some crap <laughs> about saying oh, this should be that, that should be this, this should be that. Just disregard it. Um, and then basically, wherever you save the new fonts to, whatever new folder you choose, or you say new folder or whatever folder you choose, that's where the fonts will be generated to. And once that's done. As I mentioned, yeah, if you have if you had launched Media Center since your last logon, restart the computer. Then what you would do again is um, after you've taken ownership of the existing Media Center files, copy and paste them to a backup location so that way you can revert the files if needed, or the fonts writer. And then you would just copy and paste and overwrite the files that are actually in the eHome folder, those three font files. And provided you've done it correctly. You can launch Media Center, and of course, you will get the new Sego UI fonts in Media Center. So, I know it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's I found out it's a way you can actually get it to work. And I know some of you guys who have Media Center will do a ton of things to make something work. Now, of course, you know, I would like to be able to just simply. Um, host these files and modified files for you but unfortunately I can't do that I mean we are dealing with we are modifying a you know a file that is you know copyrighted by Microsoft of course so you know I'm not going to actually host these however if you would like to do this to your Windows Media Center box feel free to do to do so with the instructions I gave I know sometimes I may not be 100% clear but hopefully this will be something simple enough for you to figure out I think it will be and it'll definitely be worth it. So that's how you can basically change the font in Media Center to be the you know from the old classic Sego that Media Center started out with to the new Sego UI that came out with Windows 8. You want to you guys enjoyed this video? Any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.